Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing a white balance on this image using Affinity Photo, going from this to that. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And take a look at my channel for a whole bunch more videos. Okay, let's get to it. There are several different ways to do white balancing inside of Affinity Photo. I'll be showing you a way that allows you to go back and do readjustments later by using these adjustment levels over here, making it very, very easy. Now, we'll start off by making sure you're over here on this first button right there. This is the Photo Persona. Affinity Photo is divided up into different modules. They call them personas. The first one is the Photo. Second one is the liquify. Third one is the develop. This is a great one, by the way, if you're working with raw photos that develop persona. But let's stick right here with the photo persona. And I'll just delete these layers in here. And we'll start this from scratch. Hit the delete key right there. So there you go. There's the base image right there as a background. And you see we have tabs across here. You tab just to the left of layers is adjustment. And in here, let's just close some of these things down. There we go. So it gets back to its default setting. Okay. The first thing we'll do is a white balance on the image. Click on white balance. Now we have two slider controls, the white balance and the tint. You need to actually adjust both in most cases. Not necessary though in all cases. The easy way to start this is to grab the picker right here. Click on that button that gives you the picker. And that's just a little cursor right here, little crosshairs. And choose something that should be a neutral color, you know, a neutral gray. Pure black, pure white, or a pure gray tone. We have a pure white in here, so I'll just choose that. I'll choose something right down there. That should be a good pure white. Click on that, and that gives you your initial setting over here. Now, it's probably not going to be perfect yet, so at this point you want to take a look at your image and maybe do a little bit more adjustment. I think that there's still just a little bit of yellow in here, so I might push the white balance a little bit further over to the left bit marked into the blues. And I'll take it clear up to, I think, 19 pretty good. You can actually type in a number over here. Just click in there and type and put a typed in number. Hit the enter key to set that. Let me just make this a negative 19. There we go. Negative to the left, positive to the right. And that looks like it's a nice white in here. Now if there's anything else it's maybe just a little bit too magenta. It's kind of hard to tell but it looks just, just a little bit too magenta in here to my eye. So with the bottom one here just a little bit to the left not too much. Take a little bit of that magenta out. It's not really too magenta looking. Just a touch. Maybe a negative six. Okay, we're pretty close to the white balance. Obviously, though, the values in here are a bit washed out still. So it closes from down. Just hit that X right there. It closes that down. You can see here's your white balance. You can ignore these things. These are fast buttons. You know, if it looks good, just click on that. It will take you close to that, but I prefer using that picker. You can close those down just by clicking on the name right here. It opens it or closes it just like that. Okay, now let's work with the values in here. And I like using the levels control. Click on that. It gives you all kinds of adjustments in here. The main one you want is your black and your white level. So work on that one. A little bit more on the black. What this is doing is it's moving the black further into the image. So it's taking the darks and making the darks darker. And that looks pretty good right here. Make sure you're watching your dark areas. You don't want to go so far to have those begin to block up on you. And that looks pretty good. The white is on the right-hand side. Let's move this in just a little bit. By moving them both in, we're actually increasing the contrast of the picture in a very controlled way. You see the histogram of our colors in here. White starts right about over here. So I can really move this clear up until it reaches that point. But that may or may not be what you want. But you can kind of get a good sense of about where this should be where your graph begins to move up. Looks pretty good. I think we're okay there. Let's close that one down and I'll click on the levels to close that as well. The last thing I want is just a bit more color in here. It's not quite as colorful as I would like. And for that, let's come down here. It says Vibrance. Click on Vibrance. Now I'll work with the saturation. That's our bottom control. Just a little more saturation. If I go too far, you can see what happens here. It really goes super saturated. So this needs just a little bit of a control, not much. Maybe 5%, just a touch, adding in just a little bit more color in there. Maybe just a little bit higher. That's six. That looks good. And we'll close that one down. 
Now let's go back to the layers up here and you can see the nice advantage of this. We have our controls right here. If I'm not happy with any of these, I can go back to that control and make more adjustments. Let's say I wanted to adjust the white balance. Just double click on that right there on the thumbnail side. We can then adjust the white balance a bit. It's looking like it may need just a little bit more blue in here and a little bit more on the green right there, just a touch. Now at this point, you may want to have even more control over your color balance. I think we're pretty close, but you may want more control. So let's go ahead and close this one. Go back down to the background layer right here, back to the adjustments. And this time, we're going to come down to color balance, and that's right down here. You can actually grab this and move this around if you want to so it's not in the way. The nice thing about this is that we can adjust the colors in specific tonal ranges. Shadows, midtones, and highlights. Let's go to highlights. And I think I'm going to increase the blue a little bit in the highlights. That's in our whites in here. Just a bit more blue there. Makes those even whiter. And that's pretty nice without touching anything else in the pictures. It allows us to really come in and kind of punch just the whites up by using the highlight control up here. I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at our midtones. I think on the midtones, maybe it's a little bit too magenta. So it's hard to tell with that red hair. It's kind of throwing my eye off. This is kind of a magenta colored pole anyway. So it's a little bit hard to tell on this, but I think just a little bit more green on the midtones. Just a little bit. And let's go to our shadows. And on the shadows, that's back in this area in here. It looks pretty neutral. But I might add just a bit more green into the shadow area as well. Let's see how that looks. Not really helping. Maybe a little bit more blue. Just a bit of blue, I think. Kind of helps out. Not too much. Maybe only 10% right there. So this gives you a different way to control your colors and aiming that at different tonal ranges, your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. So again, just a bit more control on that. But I think we're right on where we need to be. So this is the way I like to work with this is to do the basic white balance first for the whole image and then go back and kind of tweak your highlights, midtones, and shadows with the color balance right down there. Okay, so go back to our layers. There we go. Now you can check any one of these by unchecking it and checking it again and see how it, you did on that. So there's the color balance adjustment. It's a bit yellow here without it. Now we've kind of cleaned up that yellow rather nicely. And you can bring back any of these to do more controls just by double clicking on the icon and that brings back up your control right there. So there you go. That's how you can do a white balance and color balance inside of Affinity Photo using this with the adjustment layers, which I like because you can go back and readjust later. And that's on the first persona up here, the photo persona. And the last thing about this is you go up to file and save. This will save it into the Affinity Photo format. If you need to save this out to a different format, like a JPEG, for instance, come down to export right here. And there's your list of formats right there to save this out to. Okay, so there it is. That's working with Affinity Photo to white balance an image. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And again, check out my channel for more videos.